bead center of America is Daytona Beach, Florida. Here, pacing the progress of the automobile, have raced some of the world's most famous drivers. Goal of all drivers is to better the record set by these great names. And on some Daytona tracks today, racing is not limited to men only. Women have taken their rightful place in this spectacular sport. And the field is wide open to the champions of tomorrow. Every year, thousands of fans swarm into Daytona for the two weeks international safety and speed trials sponsored by the National Association for Stock Car Racing, known as NASCAR. Families from every state come to see how cars like the ones they drive will stand up in a race. One such group on hand for this year's big show is the Hassanaw family coming all the way from Detroit. For Tim Hassanaw, the trip is in the nature of a pilgrimage for he is determined someday to be an automotive engineer in one of the big plants in his hometown. But a man can concentrate better if he prowls these grounds alone to see what he can see, to learn what he can learn. And Tim's dad agrees. Any veteran racing fan could tell Tim that the man he's watching here is former champion Pete DePalo. Pete is in charge of a group of drivers in the upcoming races. But Tim is too young to know about Pete's great records. He just wants to be friendly and helpful. He might not know Pete, but Pete, well, he knows kids. And he likes kids when they like cars. A tour of the beach in that dream boat? Mister, you've got a passenger. Meet Bill France, president of NASCAR. It's nice to meet celebrities, but the only sights Tim really wants to see are automobiles. Well, almost the only sights. That's one of Pete's boys over there now, getting set for an unofficial run on the measured mile. He's Chuck Day from Long Beach, California. These are flying mile tests. The cars have two miles to pick up speed before crossing the start mark for the measured mile. At this point, the flag is just to dress things up. Actual timing doesn't begin until the cars are two miles down the beach. Electric devices at each end of the mile time the cars to a fraction of a second. And the speed is recorded in the tower. The engines in these cars are the same as those used by the public, but sometimes the bodies are modified. Chuck Day's car has a special tonneau cover to cut down wind resistance. There he goes. Two miles to the start mark, and at this rate, Chuck should cross it really flying. There it is. Now the run is for keeps, and every piece of a second counts. A hundred and fifty miles an hour. Boy! Just a warm-up for tomorrow's official acceleration tests. Will Tim be there? Well, what do you think? Daytona races are dependent upon the tide, whose routine washings leave either a beach good for racing or a bad one. This morning it's good, and hopes are high for a record in the acceleration tests. In this race, the cars are clocked from a standing start, and their time is averaged from the instant the wheels begin to turn. Chuck Day is out for another record. This will be tougher than yesterday because the cars don't get a running start. That's it. Get gone, boy. 
quick response is the big test here. A car which responds safely from zero avoids the dangers inherent in passing on a hill, in unexpected corner turns, and so on. That looks like it is a new world's record. Chuck Day averaging 88.78 miles per hour over one mile from a standing start. A new day, and rain soaks the big circular track where the Grand National will be run. The rain and tide have made a mess out of the north turn. Anything can happen today and probably will. There's the flag and they're off. 76 late model stock cars in a terrific drama of durability and driving skill. A race of 160 miles on a track slightly over four miles. Half pavement, half sand. That's it, that loose sand on the north turn. There's going to be trouble here today. This hour and a half will deal out more punishment to the cars than five years of normal driving. Even to stay in the race, a car has to be rugged. Something's happened on the north turn. A bad flip in that loose sand. Not a scratch. How do you like that? Out in front, Tim Flock of Atlanta. Those tough turns. It's a wonder these drivers even managed to stay put. Uh-oh. Well, it appears that sometimes they don't stay put. But it's all in a day's work. Tim Flock still leads, and in second place now is Ralph Moody of Florida, one of Pete DePalo's boys. Now what? Moody has just flipped, but he lands upright. There goes his lead. If he can pull out of this, it'll be something. Well, how about that? And just a moment ago, it was a brand new car. Last lap, Tim Flock is still in the lead. Billy Myers is second. And well, Ralph Moody, in spite of his spill, has fought back up to third place. And there's the finish, Tim Flock. And here comes Moody. Moody, the man who came back, a winner.